picked the wrong weight to quit sniffing glue. Welcome to this special video. Uh, this video is working with the uh, the Metaluna Saucer and Zagon Bomber available from AJA Models, AJA Models, Adam Johnson. And uh, this the purpose of this video is to show you how to uh, put the masking material down. Now um, we're going to start by I have assembled. I did the incredibly hard work of assembling these two parts. Uh, also, you first thing you got to do is you're going to sand off the uh, pouring sprues. There's a little bit of uh, pouring stem here and it was on the front two pieces here. No big deal. That should be the first thing you're going to clean that off. Give the edge a nice go around here with a, sand with a uh, sanding sponge. Clean it up. Wipe it down with maybe a little bit of alcohol just in case there's any uh, uh, um, release agent on it on the uh, mold. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, hit this with a filler primer to get a nice even coat that's a that's something you could find at any uh, auto parts store I usually use the duplicolor filler primer uh, or a primer sealer depending I filler primer is usually my first go-to that'll cover up any small scratches and then uh, I'll sand that with a sanding pad and um, then go over the whole thing again with a primer sealer now I'm not going to show you all those steps. If you don't know how to use a spray can, then for the love of God, put the model down, take two steps away, and learn how to use a spray can before you uh, step back to your model. So let's go throw some uh, primer on these, and then we'll be ready for the next step. All right, so I've got a coat of primer on both of the ships now. The tiny one, the, the little uh, Zagon bomber, it's going to be fine by itself. It, it's, there's not much to it. It's very simple design, very simple planes, and uh, that's good to go. Now, when I put the primer on the top of the big main ship, I did find a little divot here where I got too eager when I was sanding away that pour stub. So I've got some putty on that to kind of bring that back up. Um, got most of the same case on the bottom here. We've got a, a basic chrome silver on here. Uh, it's base, The thing is going to be the tail of two, uh, two metals. And it's really up to you to decide what two colors of metal you're going to use. I'm going to use uh, chrome silver, and uh, which isn't really a like a high bumper chrome. It's, it's it's that's what the color is called, chrome silver, but it's not a uh, high gloss shiny like I said, like a bumper. Uh, but then we're gonna I'm gonna have a contrasting darker, not quite gun metal, but a darker silver to uh, give me the accent color that I want. So while this is drying, I am uh, basically twiddling my thumbs waiting for that to dry up enough that I can sand it. Then I'll reprime that spot and then we'll go on with the, the chrome silvering. And I'm hoping to get all that done today uh, because I want that base coat of chrome, of the base coat, whatever color it is. And I'm using automotive paints. I want the base paint to have a good overnight at least to dry so that it is good and cured and bonded to the primer coat and will stand up to any adhesive uh, sticker or vinyl we put on it uh, tomorrow. Okay so we're back. This is the, the next day in case you're not aware. Uh, this is a coating of universal chrome that has had the entire night to dry. Both sides, top and bottom. It's important that you are uh, letting your first coat get a good bind, get a good bite on the uh, primer coat that's underneath that. It's also vitally important that you have cleaned your piece before you put the primer coat on it. You don't want any oil or release agent or anything like that that's going to be fighting against you when you uh, go to put your vinyl masks down because vinyl will take the course of least resistance. And, and it's easy, it's, uh, I explain it like this. The vinyl that I use has a certain amount of adhesiveness. It wants to stick to your uh, paint, which is good because that's what keeps your paint protected. Now, it has a certain strength. It has a certain adhesiveness. If that strength of the adhesiveness of the vinyl is 
stronger than the bond that your paint has to the primer coat or the primer coat has to the resin, uh, the resin kit underneath, then that's going to pull the paint up. It's going to pull the course of least resistance. So what you want to make sure is that your is that your vinyl has a weaker uh, adhesion to the to the paint than the paint has to the primer coat than the primer coat has to the resin underneath. A good strong bond between your resin and your primer coat, and then between the primer coat and the uh, coat of paint that gives you a wonderful shell and if that shell is intact then no amount of adhesive vinyl is going to pull that paint off so that's the important thing cleaning your parts making sure there is no grease or release agent trapped underneath there you don't want a failure of your primer coat and you don't want a failure of your top coat on top of your primer there's, there's just no way to stress that uh, too much so now we've had this bonded on here for a complete day. This, this I did yesterday. So now we are ready to attach the vinyl to the uh, outer shell of your silver coat. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a two-tone silvered effect or a two-tone metallic effect. Whatever colors you choose, that's up to you. That is one thing uh, people will ask me, and I refuse to. I refuse to tell them. I say, color choice is a very personal thing. It is what you what you are comfortable with. Now, what you're going to find when I am doing this as an example, I am probably going to end up doing something that has a little more contrast than you would. And the reason I do that is because I want you to see that contrast clearly on this video. And therefore, I might go overboard a little bit. And there are ways to mitigate that. You know, if you find out that your contrast has gotten too high, then there are ways you can do to combat that after you've taken your vinyl off. But I find that you generally, when I am doing something, particularly if I am doing something for instructional purposes, I have a tendency to go too, uh, too unsubtle too contrasty. Um, I prefer my uh, finishes to be more subtle in real life, but I understand that I am overdoing this for the sake of explanation. So we've got our, uh, our surface ready. I know I keep touching this and it's not great because I'm putting, uh, I'm putting at this point, I'm putting uh, bodily oils on there. So we want to wipe this down. A uh, nice clean t-shirt or a paper, not a paper towel because a paper towel might scratch. Uh, particularly if it's a metal finish or metallic finishes which are picky enough to start with. So uh, I'm going to wipe this down with a nice soft cotton cloth, a, a, a t-shirt or something like that. And then we will be ready to start sticking our vinyl down. Alright, this brings us down to the meat, the very, the very heart of the... Uh, reason why we're here today. In your box with your ship you should have gotten two sheets like this. Uh, I had asked Adam if he thought he, we should uh, cover those with transfer tape before we send them out and he was uh, he said no. So uh, your sheet should look like this. Now I will tell you well first of all this is this is for the top this is for the bottom and the reason you can tell is the bottom has that raised area with the uh, oval and the circle in it. So this is the bottom. We're going to put this aside for right now and we're going to concentrate on the top. Now uh, this has a waffle pattern, what I call a waffle pattern to it and that is it does not have, it's not a checkerboard. The bottom is checkerboard where every uh, every single square that's on it is either on or off. Uh, you can see what I'm saying. There, there you can, the pattern on this is much wider. There are, um, in, a, in a true checkerboard pattern, this shape here and this shape would be missing as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take out all of the uh, negative squares and these are what we're going to be painting through. We are going to be sticking this yellow vinyl down on the hull and uh, we're going to be blocking the silver paint that's already on the hull and we're going to be painting another slightly different silver paint through it. Um, 
and then once I get all these once I get all these pulled out I will introduce you to my secret weapon okay we're back to this uh, top sheet with all of the uh, negative squares removed now you could save those if you wanted to use them for something else and uh, you know use them as plating on another model that you might have you could simply put those down on the side of the hull and paint over it and you, you're automatically adding greeblies but uh, that's that's uh, for a project for another day but here's where we're done we've got everything removed and we're going to transfer this to the top of the ship there's the top of the ship we want to put that onto here now it's going to be cumbersome to try to put all of this down on one at one time because it's going to be floppy it's going to uh, be sticky on one side it's just not the easiest way to work um, so this is where we introduce my secret weapon my secret weapon is transfer tape I use this uh, whenever I am trying to move big bulky pieces of vinyl from the sheet to the ship and uh, you can get this in at any uh, local sign supply store you can go online and find it um, it comes under various brands and various names. You can get it anywhere from 2 inches up to 12 inches in width. It's very handy. Think of it as a roll of double, of uh, not double stick tape, good lord no. Think of this as a roll of post-it notes without, you know, how post-it notes only have the adhesive along the top. This is adhesive the whole way down. This is less, uh, less sticky than, um, regular paper tape even your uh, fancy schmancy frog tape this is less sticky than that and you know remember, remember what I was saying about uh, the patterns of force there and you want to have something that is less sticky well this is far less stickier than the vinyl that we're putting it down on and uh, so that when you pull it up the vinyl will stick to the ship but the paper won't so I'm just going to overlap these here make a nice little and I'm using a squeegee to squeegee it down you don't have to get your own squeegee you could use a credit card you could use a piece of sheet styrene this is just a an artist squeegee that I've had for many many years uh, made for use on this vinyl actually you know they used to pack those squeegees they used to give you one free with each roll of vinyl there'd be a squeegee pack in there uh, they stopped doing that a few years ago I don't think you get any squee any no free squeegees anymore like that uh, like the uh, commercial about gasoline uh, no gas no squeegee no vinyl no squeegee um, so here we have the sheet now this is, does not help us an, an awful lot what we need to do is cut out the contour on the inside and on the outside and then what I'm going to do is basically cut this into quadrants. I'm going to cut this something like here, along that edge, along this edge, and then right here and right here. And what that's going to allow me to do is to put this down in sections because we are having to drape this over all of the sections of the ship. I think it's just going to be easier to handle that way. So let me cut these pieces out and we'll pick it up from there. Alrighty, we have the three quadrants covered and cut up. Now, it's not necessary that you have to use transfer tape. It is my weapon of choice, but you could, once you get it down to this size of a piece of vinyl, it's conceivable that you could use that without transfer tape because it's going to be smaller and easier to deal with. Um, like I said, I just I prefer it myself just as a a uh, extra level of caution. Now you're going to find yourself trimming this vinyl uh, to fit, and that's no crime. That's nobody. No one's going to keep you out of the gates of heaven for doing that. Um, but basically, what you do is you uh, kind of, and you may want to take a pencil, just make a couple little tick marks to see where everything is lining up. It's nice these portholes are there to kind of give you assistance so you take maybe take the two halves of the side here and kind of see where everybody's happy and where they're going to line up now I uh, cut them uh, when I cut them apart 
I don't know if you can see that that well, but I cut it so it's on the edge of a box, uh, not down the center of a box, uh, or the open white space there. I cut it on the edge of it, not not in the middle of it, because that way I don't have to try to uh, line them, you know, square them up against each other. So we're going to start with, maybe let's just start with this back corner here. So I'm going to move put the two pieces together make sure everything is ha happy front to back uh, that needs to come out something like that again I'm trying to level this up with the uh, porthole that's on the very front here kinda keep the center opening see this one has like I said the uh, I've cut on the edge well here's that center line here's the center of the opening so right there should be the center of the ship. You see that mark there? Right there is the center of the ship. So that's what should be lined up with the center. Here, show you this way. It should be lined up with this center uh, uh, porthole. So you line that up there. And you face it out like that. And like I said, this is not going to hit the contours exactly. So we do this. Maybe make a little tick mark here. Careful not to scratch your silver paint job. Just something to go by so that when you are peeling off the paper, which is the next step, this is going to go there edge of the paper and that's what I'm doing is I'm marking where the edge of the paper hits and there okay so the next thing to do is to peel this off now as I said you if you are uh, if you're a braver person than I you may not have even put the transfer tape on it but see how this keeps everything from flopping around let's make sure this next bit is in the camera so we're going to uh, square up. Okay, so now we know this piece has to line up against that. And we're kind of following it down the contours of the ship. And we are brushing it from the center to the outside. And now I'm seeing that this is crooked. And that gives me another reason why the transfer tape is a better idea. Because now I can peel this back up and make sure that I am aiming for the outside edge. That's much better. And now we can kind of push this to the outside give it a little stretch give it a little tug there we go we push out the oh I don't like that at all what happened there well you know that doesn't really matter like I said duh that doesn't matter because our neck our, we're gonna mask over that because if it doesn't go all the way out to the edge that's kind of okay because it we're only interested in where the uh, squares are landing Okay, now the important stuff happens. I have taken the backing tape, the backing paper, off of this first quadrant here, and I am going to apply it to the ship. Now, the first thing to do is to take our fictional center line and kind of line it up on the ship. Now, the thing is, we are applying a two-dimensional pattern over a three-dimensional shape so it's going to want to splay out and settle down at the same time so the secret is to kind of work it once you've got it in the right area is to work this center line out to the edge of the hull and then you push it down that way and you push it down this way until you get it nice and centered and what you want to do is hold it out in front of you and see that the pattern do this maybe you could see it hold it out in front of you and see that the pattern when you look at it is 
more or less perpendicular, more or less straight up and down. Now it's not going to go all the way out to the edge and we're, I'm going to show you how to deal with that. So um, we're also going to be trimming some on the inside edge as well. So we've got this one down, it's time to put the next one down, which should be easier because we've got one to kind of go by, but that, you know, that might not always be the case. So we put this down, you want to line it up against the tape that we've already had down. And that goes something like that. And you look at it and you say, yeah, I can live with that. Or you say, no, it needs a little bit off. Having this first one down is the tough one. Everything else kind of flows off of it. Okay, so that's the second one. Again, you'd start in the center. You work towards the outside and then you work towards the back. And uh, then you follow the same procedure for the back two. And let me go do that and uh, then we'll get to the next exciting chapter. Okay, now you can see I've got all of the transfer tape removed and you can see the, the true pattern on here. And you also will see where areas where it's overlapping, where it's coming up short. And this is what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna take care of those things. Now, we're only interested in painting in where these squares are. We wanna keep the paint off of this, and we want to, uh, um, let's just say, any of these squares here that don't go all the way out to the edge, we can go ahead and paint that, block that off, because we don't want our paint going all, going into this next bit here. We want the last full block and we want it to stop on the last full block. So we can go ahead and tape that off. Everything from that point. Let's see now. Um, we also want to tape off and this is up to you. I mean, you're going to have to do this with your own tape. Um, we want to tape off the upper deck here so that it doesn't get any tape or any paint splashed up on it. So let's see how well this will go. Okay, so now we're ready. To, I've got the uh, top deck taped off. I am ready to apply my second color, which is, in this case, the Vallejo Metal Color Chrome. So it is going to be one manufacturer's version of chrome going over top of another. And I am just going to test it out here. Yes, this is going to be light, light coats. And then we're going to let it dry completely thoroughly and then remove these masks and then we'll see how they turned out. Now I want you to notice by how how clearly you can still see the yellow uh, vinyl, uh, how light of a coat of this chrome I put over top of everything. The idea is not to uh, lay down a big plastered coat and that's particularly true with metallics. But the idea is if you need to, you lay down a light coat then if you feel you need to, you can come back and put a second light coat on top of it. You don't want to try to get everything down on one pass. Because I have a feeling that the, well first of all, chromes are tricky enough to work with. But particularly water-based chromes like this Vallejo, uh, you'll end up getting runs and pools and all that. And it's better to do two dry coats than one really wet sopping coat. So we're going to let this dry. I'm going to come back, maybe dust it up once more, and then we'll be ready to take the uh, tape off. Okay, so I have removed the painter's tape that was uh, covering up this top dome, plus it was uh, uh, covering up some of the edge work, and I'm left just with the vinyl that was down, and I'm going to uh, carefully start removing it, and we will see what we are left with.
Okay, now the what the color difference you're going to see depends greatly on what colors you have chosen. I can't make that any simpler than it is. But there you go. See, that's what I was looking for. A pattern that is noticeable in different lighting, but not blatantly obvious. That's a beauty. That's exactly what I was hoping for. So now we're going to continue to remove the other three quadrants. And it peels up just like that. And of course, as I've said, the strength of your undercoat is what's going to allow you to do that. So far, so good. No paint ripped up. Down to the last, the last corner. Don't make a liar out of me. There you go. And we've got that empty spot in the back where there are no. Now if I was of a mind to, I could certainly create some masks and spray just three, tri three uh, squares there. And you know what? I think I might. But it's not something that comes with your kit. So I don't want to uh, do something that you can't duplicate. But there you go. That's, that's the pattern. That's exactly what I wanted. So and this is going to dry overnight tonight before we tackle the bottom side because I want this to be good and really fully well dried, cured, whatever you want to call it. I'm in no rush to finish this and I want, because by the time I'm doing this I'm going to be you know laying it down on its, on its top a lot and I don't want to run the risk of scratching any paint that isn't completely dry. But that is... That is what we were shooting for. Morning, welcome back. It is day two on the Metaluna saucer. And the reason it is day two is because I wanted to give I wanted to give the top a whole night, day and a night to uh, uh, to dry for that paint to cure, to dry, to do whatever paint does to stop making it wet. And what we're gonna do now is I've got this nice piece of fiber fill here that's nice and soft and it's going to cushion the top of that so that we do not uh, run the risk of scratching up that paint job and we're going to do the same thing we did yesterday that we did to the top we're going to do to the bottom but uh, with a couple of differences because of the pattern and move this to the side because of the pattern of this this is a strict checkerboard which means no two pieces actually join each other so um, what I'm going to do there, there are two ways to, to uh, tackle this. You can either put all of this down on the ship and then peel up the, uh, the checkerboard pattern, or you can peel up the checkerboard pattern before you start and then use transfer tape. Or you can peel up the trans, or you can peel up the uh, ones you want and put them down. Um, it's kind of, it's, it's kind of, because this is a checkerboard pattern, because it's a squared off regimented thing, you can run the risk of losing your way on the pattern pretty quickly if you try to pick these off and put them on one by one. It can be done. I'm not going to lie to you. It can be done. It's a little bit more difficult that way. It's a little bit more time consuming. But you could, you know, map out a draw a straight line here with a you know, light pencil line or something. And the, uh, the actual filming model did have pencil lines on it to help them line up their squares so you wouldn't be out of completely out of out of line for doing that uh, what you would do in that case is that you would you know make your straight line across here you know a, a for you know a, a perpendicular line this way and this way like you were laying tile on a ha on a uh, floor in a house and then just start putting your tiles every other one that can be kind of, uh, that can be kind of, like I said, you, you could go mad doing that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the transfer tape method that I did yesterday. The good news is about that is this is a whole lot flatter. This surface is a whole lot flatter than this, which means you're not going to have the dimensional wrapping problem that we had. We should be able to line this stuff up a lot easier. So what I'm going to do finally when i get around to it what i'm going to do is i'm going to take my pattern here and i'm going to remove every other uh square now what i am going to remove 
is where I, where the paint is going to go. So what is staying here is where the paint is going to be covered up. Uh, so the ones I want to show are the ones I'm going to be removing here. So we're just going to go to it. I'm, I'm going to find just st find a spot that I like and just start moving out from that. So let's say we're going to remove this one. Okay, that's we've made our we've made our stick in the ground. That's our first square. Now you can save these if you want. We might need to save a handful of them just to fill in around here where the pattern might not go all the way out to the edge. So save a save you know you know a dozen of them. Save a dozen of them. So if you if you take this one off, that means that by extension. And you want to make sure you don't see. Oops, see, I haven't pulled too many. I had one overlapping. Not getting off to a good start this morning. So you're basically doing this. And I need to get my other exacto because this isn't the shape that I'm used to working with. But you start like this and you just remove all the way out to the edges. And then once that happens, you. Um, put the transfer tape over so let me get the the pieces removed from this intersection and we'll start with that one first all right i've got every other one removed from this inside shape and now i think you can see why it's better to do this on the paper than to put them all down on the ship and remove them off of the ship is that you get these little poke marks you get the little poke marks from where you're poking the piece of vinyl and bringing it up you don't want that happening on your hull of your ship because it's going to show on that silver uh, paint job so uh, we've got this much done. Uh, what I'd like to do is do the same thing with the outside edge. Just pick an empty spot. Just pick some place to start your pattern and then work your way out from there. So if I'm going to say, oh, this is the one I'm going to remove. Well, then I work away around, work around that to get to the rest of it. Here I'm just removing the uh, every other one. As you see, once you start your pattern, it's pretty easy. It goes pretty quickly to, uh, it's just, it's, you just have to concentrate and don't lose your place. Now see, I've just made a mistake because I said don't lose your place and I lost my place. This little corner needs to stay. So it's always, maybe it's better to, uh, Pick your big shapes, there you go, and then go in and fi figure out which little corner ones have to come off. But it, it, it goes just this quickly. And like I said, maybe you, want, maybe you want to hang on to about a dozen of these squares so that you will have them in case you need to fill in something or you have forgotten something or your pattern doesn't go quite the, all the way out to the edge. Come on, there you go. I'm going a little quicker than I need to here for the sake of the video. You know, take your time. This is something you got all day to do. You don't have to rush through it. Okay, so I've got the transfer tape down on the pieces as, as uh, I have finished taking off the pattern. And I put transfer tape over it, and then I cut this in the inside out, which is the piece that goes here. And then that's left leaves you with this ring, which goes here. And the fact that the bottom of the ship is so much flatter than the top means you could conceivably put this down as one piece. Um, am I going to do that? You know I'm thinking I'm going to try. Because it will go down, like I said, as one chunk it's nice and level like that. You're kind of squaring up your pattern with that. What I'm going to do is remove, and then this is where your, your transfer tape comes in handy because it's going to hold all of these little squares in the proper orientation to each other. And you just need to make sure that nothing gets left back on the uh, release paper. So you pull it off like that and you can see if you get something like this that's left on your paper you just roll it back do it give it an extra squeeze and pull it off now what I'm going to do at this point 
is cut the paper here and here and that's going to give me a, a live edge of adhesive so I can set this down on the ship the way I had it before nice and square and level happy yay and good just like that and then I can push it down just roll it down onto the ship get the squeegee out squeegee that down now I can fold this area back remove the paper from it making sure that all of the shapes all the little squares are stuck to the transfer tape and not the paper like that now we pull that tight not too tight but we pull it tight so that there's no air bubbles trapped underneath that and we squeegee that down and now we have the pattern completely transferred to the bottom of the ship so get rid of this get rid of that again we go over this with the squeegee and now we're going to remove get my get the blade out here again we're going to remove the paper tape Now you see what we're running into here? You see that this pattern is running a little bit longer than the actual kit. And that's fine. We don't need that. We can fold these up over. All we need is that little corner showing. You can see where we've run into a problem here where we've got incomplete squares. I'm going to show you how to fix that in a minute too. That's why we've kept our extras. See that one's this one here is peeling off. We don't need it anyway. All we need is the tiniest bit of that corner. You peel the tape back on itself at a very tight angle like this. You just roll it back on itself and that will allow the shapes to remain on the hull. These are coming off because I didn't squeegee up against the uh, raised part as thoroughly as I should have. I'm trying to take care of some of that now. Okay. That's one half of the ship with the transfer tape removed. Now you see how we've got some of these hanging out over the edge? That's okay, we don't need that. I mean, it's, it's okay if they do that. Uh, where we're gonna run into some problems here is where the shape doesn't quite follow the contour. And we take care of that simply by grabbing one of our old unused squares. We overlap it on top of the square that is the problem child. And then we score the correct angle with a very sharp exacto. And there you go. Now we've got one that is properly lined up with the edge of that hull. Get rid of 
this little bit here. Going to be very careful when you are cutting these scores because you are trimming into a metallic finish. And again, we're just overlapping the whole square and trimming just a bit where the wall starts to rise up. Let me continue on this, and then we'll then we'll uh, I'll remove the other side and clean up some of these squares and then we'll do this top part. Okay, here you can see where I have, and once I keep the camera still, you can see where I have used uh, some of the scrap squares to fill in where I had a gap and it's barely noticeable now but I, I took a very sharp exacto and I just trimmed along the uh, bottom edge of this wall and uh, that brought everything back up to where it is. And you see these guys overhanging. We don't care about those. We're going to peel all of these off anyway. So now we're going to do the same thing with the uh, smaller platform in the center. The inside is done now as well. And we can see we have kind of an opposite problem here. If we want to keep those side walls clean and not have any pattern on them, then we need to trim these guys something like this and I'm just putting this under the light and seeing where the highlight hits it as far as giving me my shadow line and that tells me where I need to trim those because it's not a sharp angle here it's a rounded contour this side is fine and I can see where some of this stuff might need trimmed just the tiniest bit from the inside of the uh, main hatch here at the bottom luckily the main hatch is a scribed line so you can follow the inside of that with your uh, exacto knife and trim out the uh, masks that overlap that but here I just had to draw just an arbitrary well not arbitrary I just like I said I, I did a contour line to see about where this matches and then draw it down now the uh, the trick is going to be not to put too heavy of a scribe line in there just enough to cut the vinyl but not so much that it leaves a mark on the paint underneath And that's where a sharp blade is your friend. There we go. Okay, and since the uh, main uh, hatch here and the side walls are all going to get that brighter chrome color, I don't have to mask off these walls like I did on the top side. So now it's only a matter of throwing some of the uh, the chrome, the metal air Vallejo metal air chrome into the airbrush and spraying this and then comes the tedious part where we have to actually go in and remove each one of these one by one step by step from the uh, finished paint and that is no uh, that is I don't mean to undersell that that's gonna be tedious that's gonna take some time but it's all gonna be worth it when you see the results okay just as before we have uh, when we did the top side I have put a a light coat of the Vallejo chrome over top of it uh, not so much that it's going to start to pool but this this Vallejo chrome actually it's a pretty good chrome. It's a pretty good chrome. Uh, it's a little bit shinier, which is great because that's what's going to give you the contrast between uh, the covered areas and the uncovered areas. So we're going to let this sit, oh, I'd say an hour or two, come back, see if we need to dust it one more time, and then uh, we'll be ready to start removing. And i got to start thinking about a stand. I've been, I pulled this out yesterday because the kit doesn't come with a stand. Um, which is kind of odd. You, you got to have some way of displaying the thing. It's there's nothing. There's no way to hang it. It's kind of heavy for that. It might be neat if you could devise some sort of clear cone shape 
that that would act as the beam and you could put a a green light up at the top of it or something but use the uh the translucent cone as your uh as your stand that might be worth seeing if i could find something out in the real world that would act that way and make my stand out of that to give just a little bit of, of action to what's going on here but we're not really here to worry about the stand we're here to worry about the painting and the painting is what we're concentrating on oh my gosh i love this chrome uh i was gonna i, I walked away from it for a minute i was going to come back and talk about putting another coat on there and it just struck me out of the corner of my eye how good that chrome looks it looks so good that i'm thinking of pulling out a couple of things i built years ago and re-spraying the chrome part or the silver parts on them because I am so happy with how this chrome came out. I'd, I've just been shaking it, shaking it and shaking it for oh, about 10 minutes. Just randomly walking around the house just shaking it. And uh, man, did that come out sweet. Um, so we're going to let this dry. I'm going to go ahead and maybe pull off some of these perimeter ones that are easy to get to. Oh, I can see the contrast in it already, but I really want this to have a good long drying time. Look at that. I can already see the difference. It catch the way it catches the light is just the thing. Alrighty, I have just spent a few minutes removing the masks from the uh, the upper plat or the upper plateau. Actually, it would be the lower plateau, and I am digging this. I am digging this like gold. Um, that is just giving me everything that I was hoping for. And now uh, you can make your pattern however you want to. This is a straight up checkerboard pattern, but if you wanted to, you know. Uh, make it more uneven or more unsymmetrical you certainly are at liberty to do that i'm not going to tell you how to uh, how to pattern your metaluna spaceship i'm only going by the, the strict checkerboard um and uh, again i come back to the the thing that we're not talking about which is the the base because the base is not part of my mandate my mandate is to show you how these masks work and uh I will tell you the secret here about removing them using a very, very sharp, fresh blade in your X-Acto. Don't do this. Don't stab down on it. You want to go very, very shallow angle. Slide it up under the corner. I'll just pick this one here. Slide it up under the corner and kind of grab it like that. Now, if you're right-handed, uh, you're going to do it with the opposite hand, obviously. Uh, I don't know how anybody can do anything right-handed. Um, I was born left-handed, uh, learned left-handed, uh, had a very understanding second grade teacher who back in the day, there weren't that many left-handed kids that wasn't that prevalent. As a matter of fact, when I was in first grade, I was at a uh, parochial school and they would slap the hand, they, they would slap the pencil out of your hand if they saw you using your left hand. Uh, but I had a very, uh, we moved out of that school very quickly, and then we went to a public school, and the uh, second grade teacher that I had was a very um, understanding person. She actually found me a pair of left-handed scissors, but by that time the damage was done, and I couldn't use left-handed scissors. And I still don't to this day, I still use right-handed scissors. But... Uh, uh, just imagine the, the flipped mirrored version of this if you're right-handed. So you're going to come in at a very shallow angle. And we're going to slide the blade up under the corner. And the nice thing about these uh, squares is that they are symmetrical. So all you got to do is grab one underneath the corner. Slide the blade in. And once you've got a little bit of a, of a, of a purchase underneath there. You put your thumb over the vinyl and the, trap it against the blade and you pull up slowly. This is not a band-aid. You don't jerk it off there. You just pull it up nice and slow. And once you've got uh, an area started, you will find that you are uh, 
Well, let's see. I can start around, do the last one around the, the edge here. Pull that off. And I'm sliding up underneath the uh, vinyl. Again, don't stab down on it vertically. Slide up under it horizontally. Okay, and there we go. It's taken about 20 minutes, 20, 25, to remove all of the yellow uh, squares from the underside. Now, you might think that's a little too contrasty, and I can see where you would think that. It's certainly a different pattern to what's going on on the top. You might think that's a little much. Now, what I would do in that instance is I would take one or the other. You could, depending on which which paint color you'd like to choose and just do a misting coat over top of the whole thing and that kind of will blend them together a little bit it will uh, cut down on the high contrast between the two I kind of dig it but I can see where it might not be everybody's cup of tea um, just a misting coat over top of that would blend it all together and then you would have your file now I noticed that Adam on his box art had used a Molotow pen Let's see what kind of shape my Molotow pen is in. It's been a while since I've used it. Mine might be... Uh, he basically had drawn in some lines. Like that. So that would give you your finished look. Yeah, I don't know if I like that. Let's get rid of those. No, let's not put that on there. Um, we'll leave it plain. I might go in with a uh, black wash and make maybe make a darker accent of those portholes, top and bottom. But uh, there you go. And you could, of course, put some black scorching on the front from you know the re-entry. Um, that might give you some an extra bit of ujuj, extra bit of life on it. But that's how you use the yellow templates. I think I think for my personal build, of course I've yet to paint the Zagon bomber, which is comes with the kit, but that's a pale yellow and doesn't really use any masking, so that's not in the uh, uh, mission statement of this video. And then I'll come up with some sort of neat stand for it to go on. you got to find the center of gravity, which is about there. And uh, drill a hole and maybe just put a simple post through it to uh, use that as a stand. But there you go. There's your top. There's your bottom. And that is nice and shiny. Yowza.